Hello and welcome to the first of the under 20 men's hula hoop national cup semi-finals. I'm Connor Meany and I'm joined here in commentary by Paul Kelleher. Welcome Paul. Thanks Connor. So we have the last two under 18 national cup champions, the 2018 champions Temple Oak facing off against the 2019 champions Moy Cullen in what should be a good game Paul. Who should we be looking out for? Any kind of key matchups that people should be keeping an eye on? Well, already looking at the lineups, um, you know, Paul Kelly is obviously going to be matched up with Erla, um, which is going to be an interesting matchup. But how they guard James Kinnear on the interior and the perimeter is going to be an interesting one. But um, with the Twins, they seem to have the two most important matchups with, with Temple Oak right now. Um, and then obviously Arshia with a nice goal from um, James Kinnear right off the bat in the post. Yeah, Chris Arcilla obviously had a big impact last night in the semi-final for Temple Oak as they got to the Super League semi-final. He contributed nine points. Here's Paul Kelly early in transition. No good. And the rebound for McKeown, but he travelled. Yeah, and RC had a big three to turn the game, I think, which got him in the lead from the long three corner. So, yeah, he's he feed off that energy. He's been playing very well in recent weeks. He's been... Mark Keenan has given him a lot of responsibility and he's repaid that faith. And you can see the energy that he's brought already with the pressure on the um, on the point guard. Yeah, that was a turnover there by Tommy McNeila. Good pressure. And that's a matchup that I think with Chris's speed up and down the floor that Mike Cullen would have to be aware of. So Whereas Paul Kelly, Paul Kelly will play the point for Mike Cullen. He'll have physical strength and power. RC will have speed and, and, and panache. So it'd be interesting to see how those two matchups end up. Panache. Good man, Paul. Good take there. And that's an early foul. A good take to the basket there by Mike Cullen. James Lyons heads to the free throw. One person who's not here today for Mike Cullen, which could be a big impact, is uh, Daniel Aramoro, who's not here. Yeah. He, had a, he had a big impact at that under 18 level when they when they won last year. Yeah, and Daniel is the type of guy that will what we call the old school rubber scores and pick up those rebounds and set those screen and rolls and and just pick up timely scores when you're probably in a cold possession. Yep. So that'll be a big loss for uh, for Mike Cullen. But James Lyons also is another experienced player at this level now for Mike Cullen as well. So I think if you look at the lineups, you know when you look at this. This Temple Oak team have won the under-16 AICC. They've won the under-18 against us um, in the nail bite here a couple of years back. So it's, it's going to be a really, really interesting game and in how it turns out to be the, the chess late in the game. Yeah, definitely. And add, add to that, uh, those club titles, they also won the under 19 A schools title with Temple Oak uh, College there. Uh, I think it was was it last year or the year before? The year before, yeah. yeah. The year so before, so yeah, a lot of honors, a lot of experience. So I, I think this is like, a, and you got Mark Harper as well, who's knocked down three on cue. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Good man. <laughs> um, you know, and I, and I guess you know, I've had the pleasure of being of sharing the, sharing teams with Paul, Paul Kelly and Mark Harper as well, the Irish teams and James Kinnear over the last couple of years. So I kind of. That didn't surprise me at the depth yeah. that uh, Mar Harper knocked it down from there. McKeown tries to hit back-to-back -back threes for Temple Oak. And a foul is called on Derek Henna. He hooked the defender as he tried to box out underneath the basket. These are, are two clubs, obviously, particularly Moy Cullen, seem to be in these... It would be strange to see a National Cup semi-final or final weekend that doesn't have Mike Cullen. It's Their underage is incredibly strong. Yeah, they just do a great job with their coaching structure and have a, have a system in place. And they really teach the game really well. So it's about teaching the player rather than teaching ske schemes and stuff like that. So, you know, they do a really, really good job of it. This also just seems to always be a toughness to Mike Cullen teams. They... They're never gonna if you they're gonna make you beat them really. They're not gonna give you anything easy. And they love Neptune Stadium, which is why I probably have them as slight favourites. Yeah. They just love to shoot the three from here. James Conair in the post. Nice Takes up. his time. Nice move inside. Really patient move there by Conair. 
a lot of young players when they post up Paul probably rushed it a little bit but he wanted to see what sort of coverage he was getting and then was able to get all the way to the basket well if you look at his post up position he didn't do the traditional post up back to the basket he posted up with his inside shoulder a nice three, timely three from Temple Old I think a foot on the line so they've called it a two but just going back to that James Kinnear scenario he posted up with his inside shoulder on the defender which allowed him to see every aspect of the play unfolding and they got a nice little cut there's that cut again that's a staple it seems but they got a nice little cut off the, off the elbow. Defender helped in. He saw the space behind him. Drop step, nice little finish. But he had the vision from the post to be able to do that. Definitely. And both teams well organized here. Clearly well coached. Looks like we're in for a good game. That's a foul there on Erla McKeown reaching in. Well, what I will say, and without knocking the two games last night, from the senior perspective, is that you're looking at two teams that are going to win the game right now. They're not holding back they're going at it early you know it was a class example last night the two senior games of cat and mouse and went to the last minute to, to see if they could get that run in the last minute to get over the line but two teams right now they're going at it it's great to watch yeah definitely very positive start for both teams McKeown all the way to the basket Boy Cullen will be disappointed that it was such a, a big lane opened up for Earlier there, but he got all the way to it and finished well. well. I thought the reversal from Matt Harper to the top to McKeown, and he, it was a 0.5 second decision, rip and go, and it was a nice little uh, block out from um, block, block out from Temple Ogan, the block to clear out the lane for the layup. Marcella pushes it in transition. Michael did a good job of just getting back into the key, not giving up anything easy. McKeown, nice around the back move, and all the way to the basket, and finishes well. Lovely move there. Right now for Temple Oak, Adrian Rear or sorry, Adam Reardon is being really effective on both ends. Like he had the block out for the open drive off from McKeown before the possession before that. He's defending really well. And on cue, he's just after bumping up against Paul Kelly. But that's a that's something that my, our Temple Oak has to be really careful of is when Paul Kelly gets that hit past you, he is very hard to stop. And as you see, Adam had to turn his body to come away without fouling, so that's, a, that's something that off the ball screen Paul Kelly will look to utilise. Matt Harper again with the three. Yeah, Paul's so strong physically. Anytime he's a oh, lovely round the back move. Kick out to the corner for three. And there we go. Beautiful driving kick. And as you said, Mike Cullen love to shoot the three in this arena. They yeah, absolutely love it. But on the wrong end of a few results here yeah. because of it. That was James Lyons who knocked down that corner three. Earl McKeown tries to get to the basket. Good contest by James Conner. And I actually like the improvement that James uh, Lyons has made on the shooting form. I mean, it was it was very mechanical in the past. That was a nice smooth catch and shoot. Nice catch and rip by James Conner. No balance at the rim. But again there, Adam Reardon with good defense. Helped across and just for some miss as we see. Podrick Lenehan checks in to the game for the first time for Derek Kenna. Is that not Matthew Donlan? Oh. Might have the wrong person there. Yeah, and Matthew Dunn's out coming from Sligo. Nice um, nice pickup from Roy Cullen. Um, you know, really solid. You look at the size, he's got good size. He'll defend quite well, he'll do the simple things. And he'll do he'll be a nice asset for this Moy Cullen on the 20 team. You can see yeah. their ice in the ball screen there, Connor. Yeah, good communication by Donlan there. He gets his hand in and a nice steal as well. So comes in and makes some positive contributions straight away. As a coach, that's what you really want. Someone to come in and not have to shoot shots straight away, but come in and try and contribute in whatever way they can. That's actually an interesting comment because last night I was having a conversation with Keith Daly during the senior game last night. And Steve James came in off the bench. First shot, open three within 10 seconds. Yeah. And Keith's, we were talking about analytics and... His question was, I'd love to know what the percentage of makes for a guy Cole coming off the bench shooting the three is. Um, needless to say, he's all around 10%. James Conner with a huge move inside, finishes and draws the foul. He's uh, causing Temple Oak problems here from the get-go. We have subs both sides. Chris Arcella also just checked out there a minute ago. Yeah, and James right now is being really, really patient in, in the post. I mean, his growth spurt in the last three years is extraordinary. I mean, he finished, I haven't seen him since August 4th, since we left the Radia, but he's already had to get another inch since he left. So, 
Um, yeah, tough matchup now. I have him pegged as as he fills out now over the next couple of years. He's going to be has the potential to be probably one of the best players in the country for a number of years. He just has the whole package really. Oh, I mean, he can shoot the three now. He can put the ball on the floor. He's smart. He's defensively sound. Playing the post. He's also a former. Um, School's MVP at under 16, so it's it's an interesting tag to put in the Matthew Donnelly with the three, and there's James with the rebound again. James gets the rebound, draws of another foul. It'll be Templog's fourth team foul of the game. Fouls on eight Finn McKeown, Jim, which, which is his first foul. And James Kinnear has one of those traits that uh, Scott Kinnigan, Kinnivan has. You know, he needs to be in your grill he needs to be talking all the time and when he's doing that you know he's going to play well when he's not doing that you're you're worried a little bit of needle yeah. the first free throw rolls out just back to that other point of the analytics as people so being steve kerr used to when he was with the spurs at the end of his career he used to sit in the practice facility reading a newspaper on the bench and then they wouldn't tell him when, but he'd have to get up off the bench and go in and shoot a couple of shots straight away when he was kind of cold because he knew that that was the only situation he was going to be coming into games. He never knew when it was going to be and that it, he was trying to practice for that situation, which is obviously quite unusual. Well, talk about free throws. I thought the free throw shooting from a lot of teams that yesterday was, wasn't at the highest level it should have been. But in that podcast I was listening to um, about analytics they were talking about free throws and they reckon that's the hardest skill in basketball to practice because it's not the same we we'll come back to that a time out here on the floor it's 14-9 to Moikulun 3.35 to go in this first quarter So welcome back, 3.35 to go in this first quarter. A 14-9 lead to Moikulun. What sort of uh, adjustments or what sort of message do you think that Roy Harper would have been saying to his Temple O team in that timeout, uh, Paul? I think a couple of things right now. One, they've got to make an adjustment in the post, whether they're going to full front and see can they come from weak side uh, protection and slow Paul Kelly down in the, in the floor. I think they're the two adjustments you've got to focus on. I think from a Moikulun perspective, they already made the adjustment on their ball screen defense because they're icing all ball, ball screens now. And there's Matt Harper as well. And that's a massive improvement in Matt's game as well as finishing at the rim under contact, which obviously as a three as a, a three-point shooter, you know, now guys are flying by. You have to have that ability to one dribble pull up, one dribble get to the rim and have that balanced finishing around the rim and get those three-point plays a different way. A lovely move there by Harper. The free throw doesn't go. Paul Kelly gets the ball and draws a foul, which is a foul that Roy Harper will be really disappointed in. Erla McKeown picks up, I think, his second foul. It is his second foul here. And the other thing is that it's obviously team fouls. So we're lo walking the length of the court. Something, again, that we saw a lot of last night. Kind of teams in team fouls and just kind of silly reach-in fouls that were unnecessary and people just walking the length of the court for two free throws. And that's the one thing you took the words out of my mouth in that one, Connor, and that... The amount of reaching that I've seen this weekend is frightening. And it's the one thing that national practice we absolutely track and we don't tolerate it. And we talk about being willing to take flesh on the sternum as so that we can move our feet. You know, and when we go to Europe and stuff like that, that's exactly what's permitted. Um, it's being willing to get your body in front, take the contact in the chest as opposed to reaching to stop them in. Like that's another reach by Matt Donnell and allows Chris to see it again in the lane. That's the sort of stuff that really irks me from a defense perspective and giving the offense the, the, or the advantage to 
to get that one dribble in. And again, straight away, Mike Cullen with the ball and a Temple Oak reach in foul. And again, for the second consecutive time, we walked it down to the floor and two free throws. But it's come from a missed layup. And, you know, our boys keep, keep telling me stop saying this, but missed layups aren't just missed layups. Inevitably, a missed layup leads to a layup on the other end or a three-point play or a foul. It's, so a missed layup is so crucial. Donlin misses the first free throw but knocks down the second. As Mike Cullen extend their lead to five here. Three minutes to go. James Kinnear matching up with Harper there. Really face guarding him, uh, making it tough. And they've made an adjustment on the ball screen again. So now with Mark Harper, they iced it. And with Chris Arcee, they're going under. So it, it just tells you what way they see each player in, in the ball screen. And for the third consecutive time, we're going to walk the length of the court and Michael and are going to shoot another two free throws as Roy Harper shouts instructions to his players. He's getting frustrated here. Um, but it also, Paul, just speaks to the capabilities of Mike Cullen and the coaching, obviously, that goes on that at this sort of age where you're able to have multiple pick-and-roll defences, that the kids are, are able to kind of understand that there, there's different ways to approach different players. Definitely. And it's, um, it's, it's a part of the game we, 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 we're, we're probably getting better at in this country and recognising those sort of things. In one respect too much pick and roll at an underage level especially 14s down but then at this level you have to be able to recognise that be able to get ready for senior basketball so it's 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 that conundrum really so Mike Cullen knocked down the two free throws it's now a 7 point lead good job defensively so far on Chris Arcilla he hasn't been able to score he puts the ball on the floor there pull up jump shot and he knocks it down really nice there by Chris he has speed Paul but he also has kind of intricacies in his game where he's able to go to different moves and a lovely pull-up jump shot there well it's the one thing i think of players of chris's size and, I, and it, it's really nice that you observe that because any player that grows up another three by my colin yeah donlin has really made a big impact since he's come into the game mm -hmm. he said that he was a, a nice pickup for them and there he is uh, both a big body on one end on defense but then able to stretch the floor on offense definitely So that's an interesting mm. on the rule change because the rule changed about three years ago that if you're going into your own court from the or into the back court from your front court and you carry over with the ball, it's no longer a half court violation. However, that tip to me is it, control. Yeah, that was a control so, tip. It was a pass, effectively. So, so it's interesting. Mm. Interesting, but I haven't seen that before. Whereas if Matt Harper was close to the halfway line and went over, no correct call. I'm not sure. That's something I gotta check out now. Chris Arcilla with the nice kick out. McKeown makes the extra pass. Tough pass inside again. Donlan getting his hand to the pass. He's really been a bit of, done a bit of everything. Conair with a tough finish. Offensive rebound though by McCullen and a nice finish inside there. And they're the sort of baskets that Temple Oak, when you have this sort of deficit, you just can't be giving up. Offensive rebounds are killers. Yeah, I know all about it from yesterday. Neptune killed us on the offensive rebounds, and just it's demoralizing when you give it, you play a good defense and then give up points after off an offensive rebound. Yeah, Temple Oak are uh, losing their discipline a small bit here now, and you know I think if you look at you know Temple Oak overcoming Neptune last night, they were champions possessions down the stretch, and right now early in the game, Moy Cullen are having champion possessions. Um, but yeah, going back to the offensive rebounds, I mean, it's one thing giving up one offensive rebound, you can slightly recover from that, but two, three, four, and five is, 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 is very difficult. So yet again, we walk the length of the court. Matthew Donlan has the free throw line. One minute and nine seconds to go in this first quarter. Donlan misses the first. A 10 point lead at the moment. Michael will be looking to extend that while they have this but his superiority it was one of the things again from last night that Neptune probably had long spells where they were in control of the game Paul and they just couldn't extend out that lead when they had control so then all of a sudden Temple Oak were able to get back into the game yeah um, and that's and you know what I remember a game last year playing up at Temple Oak we were 9 up 
three thirty seven up with three thirty three to go. Game was as near as good as done. This is where the experienced teams go to the dark arts. See when they get away with something, the game is over, they get away with it. They get away with it, they're back in the game. They don't get away with it, game's over anyway. Yeah. You know, and I think that's what Temple Oak did a great job of last night is they went to a few edgy calls and see where they end up with it. And that's the experience right there. Erlen McKeown does a good job of getting two points there. The leads back to eight. McKeown obviously on two fouls. He has to be careful here. Conair in the post again. Looks to see where the defense is coming from. Steps through. A nice right hand finish. It's it's something that Temple Oak haven't had an answer to so far today, Paul. No, definitely not. And he, again, he used a skill that's come up a couple of times in, over the weekend. Is that double pivot in the post. So you plant the inside foot, you pivot the square up. Create separation, go that second pivot to go in. And there was a there was a call in the game last night, which I thought they called a travel, which was a poor call. But here, James uh, was permitted to do it. So that double pivot in the post is a huge skill. There's two turnovers there. Michaelan lost control. Looks like Temple Oak will get the ball back, but then they turn it back over, which is a killer because this is the final possession now of the quarter. Paul Kelly moves the ball to Donlan. Steps, foot on the line, just doesn't go. McKeown picks up the ball. Long half court shot, no good. So at the end of the first quarter, it's 25 15 to Moy Cullen. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to the second quarter. This is the first of the under-20 semi-finals in the Hula Hoops National Cup. The second semi-final will be after this. UCD Marion going up against Port Leash. Mike Cullen in control here, Paul. What sort of any adjustments that you'd uh, be looking for Temple O to make? Right now, I, I think Mike Cullen done a really good job of playing through the post on cue. Um, Albeit that that was different from James where he stretched the floor on that one But I definitely think that the first adjustment has to be made is is Tempelo defending the post And if if they don't do that then this game could stretch out to 20-30 possibly at this point with the way Tempelo are playing Arcilla knocks down a huge three from that same spot that he hit one last night. Yep So the lead back to nine. Oh love the flare screen dive We cut him for three no good. Nice rebound again. Yeah, lovely offensive rebound there from McCullum. Paul Kelly drives to the basket. No good. Good rebound by McKeown. Jared Deverin had come in and got that nice rebound. Foul drawn. There by Temple Oak. They'll head to the free throw line for two. Like, Mark Harper has turned into a really dynamic two guard right now. I mean, you traditionally don't see that style of player being able to handle the ball in full court, pull up for a three, get the rim, have balance. Usually shooters are, are just shooters and can be quite frustrating to coach, but Matt really is just a little bit a little bit more dynamic and has that ability to handle the ball on the open floor as well, which helps a lot. Harper knocks down two, and that's the sort of... If, it, if Temple Oak are going to get back into this and really challenge, it's going to be the likes of Harper and Chris Arcelli who are going to need to have big performances here. 
McCullen yep, moving the ball. James Conner at the top, reverses it to Paul Kelly, a pick and roll at the top. Paul Kelly again gets into the lane. Isn't able to finish, but again an offensive rebound. James Conner has a matchup in the post against Chris Arcelli. He's frustrated he doesn't get the ball. But, but here's the thing, Connor. Chris Arcelli half fronted. There was an adjustment there. There was a, an effort to stop the ball going in the post. And then, to be fair to Mark Cullen, that's the experience. They had the ability to turn it down, switch it, and get the open three on the weak side. Paul Kelly misses the three, but another offensive rebound. We couldn't drive and kick. Lots of space now. Things opening up for them. Move the ball well. Another three. And Mike I Cullen <laughs> love Neptune <laughs> Stadium. Yeah, huge three there by Mike Cullen. It's now a 13-point lead, and... Worryingly for Temple Oak, they're starting to be picked apart. But that's a good answer by Temple Oak as they knock down a three of their own. It's interesting. Yeah, there we go. He's into the post again, and they left him open. There's a short channel cut. Ah. Yeah, nice pass, but it seems that Temple Oak are trusting the size of the McKeones to be able to play behind James Conner, but when it's the smaller defender, they're uh, trying to front. Mm -hmm. It might be a case that they may be better off or better served fronting completely, but nice finish inside there by Harper. It was, I didn't like Chris's sh shot selection there. I mean, we, we, we said it last yesterday in the Father Matthews commentary that every shot we take, we want it to be on balance, in rhythm, and uncontested. Neither three were in the situation, in Chris's situation right there. So didn't like the shot selection, but Matt Harper got the offensive rebound on it. Arcella does a good job driving in transition. Draws the foul and he heads to the free throw line and we're going to have a timeout here on the floor. 6.52 to go in this, the first half. Welcome back. 6.52 to go in the second quarter. Chris Arcella heads the line for two free throws. We come out of that timeout. I just heard a bit of the Moy Cullen timeout where they're saying they really need to key in on Matt Harper. He's the number one priority on their defensive end. What would Temple Oak have been saying down in their timeout, Paul? It, it'd be interesting because they've snuck in with some effort plays. So it'll be about probably sticking with the effort that they have and then trying to find Matt a bit more. So now they're going to try and counter, and this is where the chess comes in that we spoke about earlier on, is obviously Mike Cullen now trying to stop Matt, and Mike, our Temple Oak are going to have to try and get Matt open. Yeah, excellent. Knocks down the second free throw, so a seven-point game. James Conner reversed the ball, Paul Kelly. Jumps to pass, but gets away with it. The corner three for Mike Cullen, no good. Better defense there by Temple Oak. So Mike Cullen now have gone to the Euro ball screen right now. So where they have that long corner guy, they have the wing guy and the point guard, and then the wing guy cuts through into a um, handoff or a ball screen on, with the guy from the corner. And they got some nice action off it, just didn't reverse it very well, but it'd be interesting to see if they stick with that action. Erla McKeown couldn't finish there. Down the far end, Mike Cullen. Nice mid-range jump shot there by Jared Davron. Yeah, and again, it's just Paul Kelly just 
beating his way into the lane and making great choices again. Marcella drives the basket. Good contest at the basket by Davron. Two very good possessions by him there now. Paul Kelly has the ball. Reverse it up to James Canary again at the top. He size up Erlen McKeown. Wow. Pull, pulls up. So we've seen a bit of everything from James Conair so far this morning, Paul. Post-ups, drives to the basket, and now lovely pull-up jump shot there. Absolutely amazing. I mean, he's really evolved this game. Harper drives to the basket. And it ends up in a turnover. McCullen, as they said in that timeout, they had that clear focus on trying to stop him. So as he drives to the basket, three bodies around him and eventually just did enough Forced turnover, and this is where I mean you you were, you were really good at this, Connor, as well as recognizing when the defense is just too far ahead of your hip and getting that step back to hit that short jumper. And I suppose that's the next step for Matt Harper now is recognize where the defense is in f on his hip and in front of him because he's such a good shooter and he has that strength as well to be able to take that shot, that step back. Kenny drives the basket, doesn't get anything. Bit of a loose possession here from Michael, and can they get anything from it? Paul Kelly gets into the middle of the lane though. And draws a foul, heads to the free throw line. This could be a foul on McKeown. It's going to be important to see. It is on McKeown. Yeah, which I think is his third foul, which it is indeed his third foul, which is going to be costly for Temple Oak. And I think the one thing that Mike Cullen have gotten more so far is contributions from the bench. Mm -hmm. I mean, Matt Donlin has come in, been really good. Um, Jared Davron has, has come in been really good you know they haven't quite got that off of the Temple Oak bench yet uh, again I think it's, it's something that you expect from Michael and underage teams though as well is that you may have the one or two star players but everyone's able to come in and just really do it. no one hurts you when they come in on, onto the court and I think when you have that sort of style like you look at it Right now, Temple Oak are going to two guys and they're in the pick and roll scenario all the time. Mike Cullen have yet to make one majorly overly emphasis ball screen yet. It's ball movement, it's cutting, it's ball reversal, it's penetrate the lane, it's kickouts, it's one more. Getting everybody involved to find the space for somebody, for the right person to score. Turn over there. And Harper pushed the ball in transition. Nice take to the basket there by Finn. But he can't finish, and now Paul Kelly pushes the ball in transition. See what he it's can dangerous find. Dangerous from here. Doesn't fall, but a nice offensive rebound for him. Interesting. What's the call here? I'm not sure. Off ball just, ball? No, no, I think he might be checking the clock. Okay. I think there was an issue as they reset. Yeah, so they've just adjusted it to 10 seconds on the shot clock now. So, mark this down, Connor. Time, date, venue, day. I'm going to say it. I think the referee has been decent this weekend. <laughs> One or two high-level calls probably missed, but overall, the simple stuff has been called, and I think it's been, they've, done, they've done a really good job this weekend. Paul Kelly drives to the basket. No good. Oh. But a turnover by McCullen, which is costly. Alright, by Temple Oak. Paul Kelly sees our still in the post. He has that size, draws in the defense. They reverse the ball. Three doesn't fall. Shot clock goes off. That might be an unsporting like. Nope. Uh, he gets away with it. So going back to the analytics. I think Mike Collins done a wonderful job with this, Connor. Is they call this, and they're talking about scoring in the post has gone, not that the attempts have gone down, but the percentages has gone down because of the athleticism of the post defenders. And they did the analysis over the NBA, five year NBA and four years of NCAA. And the post scoring has gone down. However, the scoring from post passes has gone up. And they call it the inverted offense. And I think Mike Collins, with Paul Kelly there, James Kinnear, Devrin, and they've done a wonderful job. There we go, James Kinnear showing off the dribble this time. Yeah, lovely left-hand finish. He uh, has great control there. Yeah. I saw him playing Super League against UCD early in the season and went to a lovely left-hand jump hook, something you'd never see from 
most right-handed players mm -hmm. just have the confidence to go to. We have a timeout on the floor here. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back, 3.54 to go. The second quarter of this first under 20 Hula Hoops National Cup semi-final. James Conner at the free throw line for the bonus here. One free throw to come. 13 point lead at the moment. Moy Cullen certainly have been the more dominant team so far as Conner knocks down the free throw. I think the lead is probably about right 14 points. Um, you know, there we go to another ball screen again. I think Temple over just being a little bit predictable right now with everything being a ball screen. And it's becoming easier to defend. Or switch that one. Open the gate. There's Paul Kelly in, in the go again. Good turnover forced by Temple Oak. And just on that, it's the one thing, so that was a flat ball screen. We call it the Draymond because that's where Draymond Green did it with the Warriors and it kind of became a bit prevalent with that sort of stuff in the NBA now. Um, but the big thing is, and what Devrin did right there, was he opened the gate. So instead of keeping his chest in front, he opened the gate, let the defender get on his hip, got the block. But most of the time that inevitably ends up in your layup or a foul. But, so we talk about keeping the gate closed. Connor Flood checks into the game. He asked me for a shout out and commentary yesterday, so I'll just have to give it today. Here we go again. Good work initially by McKeown to not give Conair too good post position, but again, Conair really patient because they're set up pushed it in transition. Nothing there though. Good job there by Temple Oak, or by Mike Cullen just to get back in and kind of crowd the paint, not give up anything easy. Harper with the pull up. It's a tough I, shot. I tell you what now, with his shooting form, that's a, a shot that Matt takes a lot. He's able, right able to get that extension right above his forehead over defenders. And, and because it's a stop on the, on the goal and the defenders are leaning forward, he does a great job of finishing that. And Conner headed back to the free throw line. Right now, James Conner is dominating this yeah. game on both ends of the floor been fantastic so far Temple Oak haven't had an answer for him this is that first free throw so we've got an important two and a half minutes left in this second quarter 12 point game at the moment what's Temple Oak's target uh, at halftime uh, Paul is kind of try and get it down to about 8 I would say right now single digits um, will, will that be 9, 8, 7 possibly 10 will be acceptable um, but they certainly can't have it above 10 and a flood for 3 just doesn't fall and a run out for Mike Cullen from it and that's going to be disappointing for Roy Harper that they had good balance on the floor a long rebound came out and somehow it led to a fast break layup McKeown drives to the basket, nothing there. Back out to Flood in the corner. That's great on ball defense. That's keeping the gate closed right there. Brilliant on ball defense. And Matt Harper ends up having to shoot from like 10 feet outside the three point line. So we're at 14 now, 143 to go. It's slightly a bit of danger time here for, for Temple Oak. They it's need to keep hanging on. It's certainly danger time because. 
I remember yes, then Mahal asked me in the Star game, where do they get word? And I said 15. I think I think 15 is near next to possible for Temple Oak right now. And jump ball. Well, the, I think one of the issues that Temple Oak are, are facing is that Boy Cullen are able to really just hone in on one or two key players, as we said, and the other additional players for Temple Oak just have to be able to catch and shoot, and you have to trust yourself in these situations rather than if you just kind of let the ball stick. It allows the defense just to absolutely key in on the, the two or three players. Nice shot. And I think part of that is down to the fact that while the ball screen is being set, there are three spectators on by Temple Oak. So it's allowing the Moy Cullen defense to stay stationary and then see what's happening off the ball screen in terms of having an action off of the ball screen. Nice shot by James Lyons. Yeah, corner three there by Lyons. And we're at that 15 point mark. And yes, in that, I'm going back to analytics again. Right now, the most efficient three in the game right now because of the way the three point line is set up is actually the corner three right now. Yeah, it used to be, a long time ago, people used to say never shoot the corner threes, but the three-point line is obviously closer in the corners, so... And the reason for that, never shoot the corner three, is because of what happened with James Kinnear's rebound, is the long, long rebounds can happen for transition. So it's that balance again. And a familiar sight there, James Kinnear, post up, gets Matthew Harper in the post, and ends up heading to the free throw line. Roy Harper questions the call, but... Temple Oak just haven't been able to find a way to limit Canaire's influence in this game so far. And I think in this, in those scenarios where a guy is dominating, and we did it on Sellers last year with um, with um, with Mari, and we played man to man in the one. So we allowed switching, but if you were on Sellers, he did not catch the ball. But he, but we forced him to go back door, and if he stays outside the three point line, that that's good. I think right now a, a similar type of tactic here with. Um, with James Kinnear, he just can't catch the ball. It doesn't matter where you're fronting, whatever, he just does not catch the basketball right now. Yeah, something's needed by Temple Oak to take Moy Cullen out of their rhythm. Everything is kind of comfort level at the moment. Harper with the ball, drives, draws a foul. It's on the ground though. I like, I like the way Matt just leaned. He, he got that front foot over the top, stayed leaned, and it was very hard for the defender to get that catch-up step back in front And when the gate was open. So it was really nice offense by Matt Harper, their individual skill. All right, so the, with the ball, tries to get into the lane. Another turnover, though. Paul Kelly with the ball. Eight seconds to go in this first half. And nice two there from Mike Cullen as they take their total to 47. Long range shot by Harper, finishes out this half. So at the half time in the first under 20 Hula Hoops National Cup semi final, Mike Cullen lead Temple Oak 47 to 30. We'll be back after half time.
Welcome back for the second half of this, of the first of the under 20 Hula Hoops National Cup semi finals. Moy Cullen in, uh, have a big lead of 17 points after that first half. Any adjustments that you'd be hoping that Temple Oak might try here to disrupt Moy Cullen a little bit? It sounds like an echo right now, but there we go. There's the adjustment. They're, they're trying to not let James Kinnear catch the ball and we see what happens. But watch out for Paul Kelly, third quarter Paul Kelly. He's done, he's had four points, there we go, right? But third quarter is where Paul Kelly steps up for scoring usually. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see where they go, the adjustments and offense with that. A good stop there by Temple Oak, but and Adam Reardon has the matchup with James Conair, a little bit more physical. He's pushing Conair away from the basket. Never let go middle, never let go middle. <laughs> miss layups aren't just miss layups. So just in terms of scores right there, and this is where I think Mike Cullen have had a little bit more spacing on the floor. So James Kinnear with 16, James Lyons with 8, Matthew Donnell with 6, and Paul Kelly with 5. And then from the Temple Oak perspective, Mark Harper with 14, Chris Garcia with 7, and Earl McKeown with 6. So they just need that third score to try and get him back into the game a little bit. Reardon did a good job getting to the basket, just couldn't finish. Paul Kelly looking in transition, frustrated that James Kinnear was taking a little longer to get down the court. Little bumps, yep, yeah. late call, but good call. Yeah, so often, yeah, Reardon just hobbling a little bit. So often you kind of get away with what might have been called a foul and then immediately after that, you, you can't give the referee another reason to, to call you. Well, it was interesting, we, we had a, there was a German referee gave our coaches and um, refereeing seminar at the Euros last year. It was probably the best presentation I've seen. So one of the things they talk about is the first contact will be allowed, provided it does not disturb the movement of the offensive player. It will only be called if it disturbs the movement. But the second contact is where they'll call the call. And I think that's what we saw there. It didn't disturb the first contact, but it disturbed the second one. That's interesting play there. So three fouls. James Canary picks up two quick ones to start the third quarter here. And he's going to head to the bench. As Matthew Donlan checks back in, Donlan had a big impact in that first half. But that matchup that Temple Oak haven't had an answer to, all of a sudden, James Conner heads to the bench. And because of that, Temple Oak have to. It's not should or could, it's, a, it's an expectation. They have to make an indent on this now. Yeah, and unfortunately, that's their second turnover of this first minute and a half. Erla McKeown just stepped on the sideline. So this is the time Temple Oak need a run. Reardon does a good job bodying up. And Temple Oak get the rebound. Chris Arce pushes it in transition. Big three here for McKeown. Just doesn't fall. So Mike Cullen have now gone to their third style of play in the game. What's happened right now is Paul Kelly's making it past the wing. He's going opposite, allowing the top of the key three to be squeezed into by the forward now they've gone the opposite side this time on the ball on the post entry side so didn't do it that time but nice kick out nice turn around loop around the jump ball called and it'll be Temple Oaks ball still 17 point game neither team has scored yet to start this second half and Temple Oak have tried to make it a little bit scrappy to just to slow down um, Moy Cullen. So it's, go it's going to be interesting to see how the rest of the quarter plays out. Nice turn the corner, nice change of direction by Chris Garcia. Yeah, lovely finish. By Garcia. Donlan has the ball here. Ball goes into the post, the lines. Reardon bodying them up. Wow, and again, good call. yeah, good, good call, and Adam Reardon's really had a big impact now in this, at the start of this second half. He's doing a good job bodying up, being physical in the post. I thought James Lyons did a good job of getting to the middle, recognise not there, turned back around, and then didn't kick out on the double post, which is probably the mistake he made, rather than trying to go a second time. Harper kicks the ball out. McKeown gets the basket, and... Heads to the free throw line. That's quick four fouls in the first three minutes here. This second half on Moy Cullen. 
Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how long James Kinnear stays on the bench if, if the rhythm is lost from the offensive perspective from Mike Cullen. So that's going to be interesting to see how Coach Lyons manages that. Padraig Lenehan just checked into the game there. And again, it's a missed free throw for Erna McKeown. As you said, Paul, we've seen a lot of missed free throws this weekend. Donlan on the wing, attacks the rear, nothing there. Templo try and gamble a little bit, uh, end up giving up a corner three, doesn't go. But another offensive rebound. Paul Kelly looks to attack, nothing there, kicks it back out to Donlan, nice. A little head fake and one dribble pull up, it doesn't go. I said it pushes it in transition. And the Euro step. <laughs> and finishes. The Euro step. The Euro step. And he got it off an inside out too. Yeah, Euro was lovely. Inside out to the Euro step. Called him the Filipino Jordan yesterday. Really? <laughs> Let's not get into this whole GOAT scenario of Michael Jordan versus LeBron and Kobe and all that. Versus Chris Arcella. Yeah. It's a tough conversation. <laughs> tough conversation. Paul Kelly heads to the free throw line. Let's talk about Muggsy Bones now. Yeah. yeah. Who played against Marion back in the day. Right off the top of your head there. Well done, Connor. Yeah. Lots of random facts in there. Paul Kelly knocks down both and leads back to 14. Much better job there by Michael Cullen. Tightening everything up and Chris seems to have taken a knock there. And Chris is tough, so if he's down, there's a legitimate knock there. Hopefully nothing too serious, particularly as he gears up to play in his first Super League National Cup final on TV in a couple of weeks' time. In what should be a very interesting game, two local neighbours in DBS Aina and Griffith College, Temple Oak. It looks, just from our point here, that he may have just taken a bad dead leg as he they seem to be going for his tie. Yeah, there's nothing worse. He, he'll he get over today and he'll, he'll be back in the game if it's just a dead yeah. leg. But it's tomorrow and the next day and the day after where they manage that his yeah. will be the key of... Oh, he's struggling with that one. Yeah. So, he checks out of the game and... As we said, this is kind of the key key time for Temple O to make a move, and that just makes things even more difficult for them. Mm -hmm. So they've been winning this quarter by three so far. Nice pull up by Matt. Unfortunately, just stopped short, but the right choice. Yeah, he, he made the right move, but he just bobbled the ball on his way up and then tried to regain control of it and shoot it. So it just came up short. I always find it interesting with teams letting point guards inbound the basketball. And that's the reason why. You know, you want the guy who's comfortable on the wall under pressure to be handling that if there is a bit of a press going on. Oh! A steal by Temple Oak and it's called an unsportsmanlike foul. Hmm. Not fully sure about that one. There was another player just beside them. There actually hasn't been that many unsportsmanlikes that I can think of over the weekend. People have adjusted finally to that rule. Yeah. Well, I thought there was two in the in the Trilly game last night. Rap, Polis Bovidas got called for one. On this end down here, we're on the opposite end that we're shooting free throws right now. And then about a quarter, half a quarter later, there was one up here which was similar. And I just thought it was a bit inconsistent. I'm not sure either were, but 
it was the same action of being overly aggressive on the downward motion is what was called, you know, and I just thought that both of them were the same and it was called differently. There was a few tough fouls in that game last night, very physical. Paul Caddy, nice rebound. Pushed it in transition, kick out to the corner. Nice head nice fake. Shot fake. Nice oh, beautiful. shot fake. Beautiful there by Mike Cullen. Lovely shot fake. Set his feet back up and knocks down the corner three. And then an offensive foul called on the ball screen. And that goes back to that last three of being in rhythm on balance uncontested. So he lost his balance, but in the rhythm he got his balance back, became uncontested, so it's a good shot to take. So lead is back out to 15. Michael doing a good job here managing. And there's the opposite of Paul Kelly. He's going with the flash from the forward into the your ball screen. Lovely, nice little um, scheme there. Nice little scheme. Just didn't screen well to turn the corner off of that. Lyons gets all the way to the basket and a lovely finish. And if the screen had happened better earlier, that would have happened five seconds earlier. So, but a nice little scheme. I like what they did there. Good help across by Mike Cullen, but Matthew Harper has earned a trip to the line. It just seems that it's taking a huge amount of work for Templeau to be able to manufacture any kind of points, whereas Mike Cullen are in a, a much better rhythm offensively. Yeah, um, and the couple of minutes that James Clare went out of the game, Mike Cullen struggled a few possessions, but they found their rhythm back in that again now, so it's, yeah, and they've, they've brought themselves away from the post because they were, they were doubling it earlier than that, so by flashing the four from the weak side block to the top of the key, they've, they've found a bit of space to get into. Both free throws are good for Tempelo. Again, it just goes back to how well coached the team they are that lose an influential player for a few minutes and they're just still executing really well. Yeah, you coach everybody. Coach everybody. Paul Kelly earns a trip to the free throw line. Just Chris Arcella is moving pretty well behind the bench there, which is good news. Templeau fans trying to distract Paul Kelly on the free throw line. It didn't work. And the lead is back to 17, as it was at the start of this quarter. So despite some good work from Temple Oak, they yeah. just haven't been able to eat into that lead. And Temple Oak have been trying to get Mar Harper. That's the you know fairly common horns flare now that they're using, that, that's going off the four, flaring off the five and diving. Um, except that Ma they never dived the five that time. Uh, tough shot by Ma Harper there against contact. So Paul Kelly screams out motion. Gets the short corner in the drive. And that's been a, a really sweet spot for Paul Kelly's passes and assists the entire game. Yeah, nice, nice assist there from McCullen, and they extend their lead out further. Nice pass for Temple Oak and Connor Flood with a nice left hand finish. I tell you right now, James Kinnear is off the floor, but he's still contributing. And this is something that I'd really like to encourage about celebrating other people's success from players. You know. James Kinnear is on the bench being an, a tremendous cheerleader for everything great that Mike Cullen are doing right now. He was the star of the show and now he's, he realizes he's in trouble so he's been a great teammate on the bench. Phenomenal. McKeown just misses the three, a little flat on that one. Paul Kelly pushes in transition and another layup and a trip to the free throw line. Jared Devron is going to head to the line for two and... Temple yeah. Oak are searching for answers, but there don't seem to be many there, although Chris yeah. Arcilla checking back into the game. And they're Could about to call a timeout, Temple Oak. We have a timeout for Temple Oak, so we'll be back in just a moment.
So Jared Daverin at the free throw line. Someone opened the door as he shot that one, so just a bit short. Second one long, but an offensive rebound for Mike Cullen. And they reset it. Paul Kelly gets into the lane again. Nice strong finish. Finishes through contact. So a 19 point lead. Nice Euro step there by McKeown and a nice finish inside. All the footwork around the rim by Temple Oak is reminiscent of one tough summers, I think, <laughs> at the minute. I think Matt Harper got that jar of thumb. Once the loose ball came towards him, though, it kind of recovered it. Nice spin move. Doesn't finish. Really just couldn't finish. They're the ones that you really need to knock down if you're going to get back into this game. Which at the moment looks Great unlikely. Great weak side caught by Matt Donnan for the kick out. Not there. And despite Mike Cullen being a really good shooting team, they haven't actually hit that many outside shots. It's a lot of really good work around the basket so far today. Yeah, and they just take what, Mike, what Temple Oak have given them, essentially. I mean, that's... That's great recognition and understanding of the game too. Harper heads to the free throw line. Fouls on Podrick Lenehan. It will be his fourth foul. Harper hits the first. Knocks both down. Harper has been probably the bright spot for Temple Oak so far today. Yeah, and look, Matt's a top player. Top, top player. Um, going to be a tremendous Super League player. Has all the attributes, the skill set, the understanding. Um, can improve his defense. But um, yeah, has all the attributes to be a top player in the Super League in the coming years. Wow, <laughs> way to stay with that. That's just a, a nose for the ball by Devlin. Or Devlin. That's exactly the type of basket that Moy Cullen always find a way in the game to score. They just have that sort of gritty play to them. Nice bounce pass. Oh, very nice, very nice. Yeah, play. lovely extra pass there. And Moy Cullen look, showing why they're the favourites for this under 20 National Cup. I think the one thing with Paul Kelly and why it makes it so hard to guard them right. is you never know when the ball is getting released. It can be early, it can be on time, it can be late, and never turned over. But you're always worried about when he's going to leave the ball go. Great timing of a passer. Nice step through, a nice finish. Good I patience. tell you what, young J Tommy McNella has been really effective in this game. A couple of threes. Made layups, hasn't turned all over, other than the first possession of the game where Chris RC went all over him, but he's, he's recovered well from it. And a foul by Connor Flood. Matthew Harper took a pretty hard bump there. Yeah, a rugby style land, I think. You certainly know by the end of that you've played Mike Cullen. Nothing dirty in anything that they do, but they certainly play physically and they're playing very well here so far. Well, the big thing is when you're when you're good on ball defensively and you're you're willing to take flesh in the chest, it looks like you're 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 fouling. But they just play really good on ball defense. They take, yep. they they allow themselves to take contact in the sternum and they play in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the proper defensive line. Second free throw doesn't go. Good rebound by McKeown. Donlan does a good job getting that rebound. And Michael out of running again. Good patience though. Paul Kelly. Drives all the way to the basket, draws a foul, and he's going to head to the free throw line. 
just under four seconds here to go in the third quarter. And it's a 20 point lead. Yeah, what's going to make it really tough in the last quarter and how the game fizzles out to finish is, is Temple Oaks foul trouble right now with a bunch of players in four fouls, so it could be a long four quarter. Yeah, we may not see James Conner again. And we may not see a whole lot more of Paul Kelly either. Michael, last year's under-18 National Cup champions, very impressive so far here today. They will play the winner of Port Leash Panthers and UCD Marion, which will be in the second game. Coming up at 3 o'clock here, Neptune Stadium. So still 3.7 seconds to go. And this free throw actually led to an extra possession for Mycullen. Three just doesn't fall, and that's the end of the third quarter here. 68 47. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to the final quarter here as Temple Oak play Moy Cullen in the first of the under-20 National Cup semi-finals. Long three from Adam Reardon and a great start to this fourth quarter for Temple Oak. Reardon's done a good job in the second half, uh, Paul. Yeah, um, and Moy Cullen for the first time really made a mistake the whole game defensively in that respect, but it's just not letting anybody go middle. I mean, Connor Floyd went right down the gut. Everybody had to sink to stop the thing and they let the kick out on that, so... Lovely footwork, but just doesn't fall. Chris pushes the ball in transition. Nothing there. McKeown steps up for a ball screen, a hedge. Nice pass. Good patience, turn around, jump shot, and it's a lovely basket inside there for Tyg McNevin. His first basket of the day. And Tyke's actually a decent three-point shooter himself, so um, there's James Lyons, not there. Yeah, pretty wide there, and then run out, and a layup for Temple Oak, so a quick seven points. The leads back to 14. Nothing hugely concerning for Moicullen yet, but they won't want to see anything more than this. Conair heads into the post. Where they've had a lot of success so far today. Good ball movement out of the post. Good extra pass and hits the top of the backboard. And ball controlled by Temple Oak. Marcella pushes the ball. Looks to nice extra pass. Connor Flood for three. Just short. And Devon is gone. He is gone. Oh, he should have made that. Yeah. Paul Kelly cleans it up. The pass initially for Devon. Maybe just a little late for him. And he ended up going behind the basket. Connor Flood. Yep. Unfortunately, 
There's just a short stoppage here. So the game is just paused for a moment. We'll be back underway now. I said it looks in the post. Nice pass. Again, just doesn't fall. Two Temple Oak players both got a hand to the rebound, but got in each other's way, and it's Moy Cullen ball. Yeah, it was a nice downhill ball screen by Chris and, um, and it, Adam, and um, it was just the timing of the help side defense from Moy Cullen just put Adam off a little bit. So with the pressure Paul Kelly's under, James Kinnear shows another skill set, becomes the point guard, bringing the ball up the floor. Foul called on Erlen McKeown, I think. Is that his fourth or his fifth? That would be his fifth, yep. Yeah, his fifth. So, unfortunately for Temple Oak, I don't think either of them know who the, the foul was called on. So, Erlen is a bit perplexed. Didn't yeah. think he was the one to fold. And his twin replaces him. Finn McKeown comes into the game. Earl is a bit frustrated there. We'll continue here. So 16 point game. Uh, oh, nice little slip. Oh, that's the second one. Yeah, it just doesn't fall for Devon. Well executed inbounds, but you gotta finish it. And then a transition three doesn't go. And McCullen are out and running again. The minute Paul Kelly has that ball in his hands, Moy Cullen are running. Yeah. They're gone and lovely left hand finish there by Kelly. When you have a point guard like Paul Kelly, you're, you know that you, if you run, you'll be rewarded. Really puts teams under pressure, doesn't he? Nice step through, draws contact, and he heads back to the free throw line. He's constantly kind of probing against the defense, seeing what's there. Very tough uh, guard to kind of limit in the, in the game, Paul. And the same thing. I mean, like the big thing is you don't know when he's going to release it. Is he going to release it? Is he going to get to the rim? Because he has all the timing of the phases off of every dribble down, it's just so hard to guard him because you know he's, he, he, can, he can read the game so well. First free throw. Good. And second one, good. Chris Arcella finds Finn McKeown. Matthew Harper tries to push down. Tough shot, good defense by McCullen, and a foul for Temple O. McCullen have done a good job really kind of focusing in on Harper, not giving him any space after he had that kind of 14 early points. They've done a good job limiting him since that point. Yeah, and he, he acknowledged, I mean, he knew it was quite close to the face, and he acknowledged it right there, which is testament to his personality as well. So, James Kinnear mid-posting this time. Nice little uh, screen on the flare by Mark Cullen. Yeah, James looking for Pex there. <laughs> it was quite an easy call, to be fair. That's his fourth foul, and could be the end of his involvement here today. I think he's going to come out. He wanted to stay in. But here's the thing. I mean, this is the competitors of Mike Cullen, and he's dead right to stick to the philosophy of how he does his rotation based on fouls. But also got to teach players to not be silly when you're off balance a situation like that so I think his reach deserves for him to come out nice little step through yeah nice step to just can't finish for McKeown Six oh nine left in the fourth quarter here as we've mentioned there will be another game at 3 o'clock UCD Marion face off against Port Leash Panthers 
UCD Marion's 18s lost yesterday to Neptune. A lot of those players will be back here again today. And Port Leash, Paul, have been one of the stories coming into the weekend. They obviously have four teams across the men's and women's playing in semi-finals. Yes. Difficult one to... You know, they're, they're probably going to create history because they haven't won the game in the 20 Cup this year and they're in the semi-final. So, a little bit of history there. Five forty-five to go here, but they've done quite well in the other twenty national league. To be fair to them, so um, and lovely finish there by Harper drew the foul and will head to the free throw line for an extra free throw. Certainly, yeah. a couple of players here today, Paul, that are going to have big impacts in the Super League over the next couple of years. Some of them are already obviously. Uh, Paul Kelly's getting big minutes mm -hmm. from Mike Cullen. James Conner is getting more minutes. He didn't play last year, so he's, he's getting his uh, more minutes this year. Uh, Erla McKeown is, is starting to get yep. uh, opportunities. Matthew Harper is starting to get opportunities. And here's the common thing, Connor. The players you mentioned have all played international basketball. When we were out of international basketball for those few years, and we only had the under-16 teams, we'd never not had an international program. I want to emphasize that. Right? But when we only had the 16 teams, the standard of the players coming through the Super League wasn't as at the level that we were. But now in the last number of years, you look at it, all the players coming through have all had 16, 18s, 20s experience to help their progress and their pathway into Super mm -hmm. League. So, you know, I just think it's, it's, it's a, that is a major importance for our national teams to have that pathway into, into Super League. It's going to be interesting, particularly for, for Temple Oak, it's as you get these sort of players coming up through the underage, how you kind of integrate them into a, a kind of an established squad that's challenging for trophies each year. That it's it's a great problem to have for clubs where you're, you're trying to win trophies and also bring in that underage talent. Well, I think the perfect balance is having those eight senior players and then your four players that you need to develop. I think that's the perfect balance. I was, you know, when I started coaching first, I was once told at that level, you know. You rotate nine, you play eight, you trust five. You mm -hmm. know, and that's kind of something that I think when you have that senior A players, one of the young guys will always have to step up to give you those few minutes that, that you need, you know what I mean, with, with that ninth rotation. But um, the big thing is, and my Cullen are probably the, the prototypical of doing the immersion from youth into senior level the best in the country at the minute yeah. albeit they're not challenging at senior level but I think the time will come when they're going to make it right yeah I think they've done a great job I think well, we have a time out here on the floor we'll come back to that point just in a moment So welcome back. We were just talking about that Moy Cullen point. They've done a great job kind of integrating players. Their, their challenge has really been that I guess it's not a, a lot of them have been able to stay in the Super League and, and even stay in Galway. It's, it's one of the challenges for Galway teams in general is you have a lot of really good guys but it's I guess Dylan Cunningham's one of the few that's actually been there for a number of years now. There's been and even Dylan went to Canada for a few years. So yeah. It, it, it is a thing with Mike Cullen, if, if, they could, if they could keep their guys, they'd, they'd, be, they'd be flying. Um, nice turnaround jumper by Matt Harper, again that high release. Um, but it is that, and I mean obviously when, when I was in Neptune we were so, so young and we only had yeah. 
Gary really is as the senior player and Darren Cronin and we just we maximised it when I was at Demons we only had Niall O'Reilly and uh, Shane Collin so getting that integration with the expectations around the environment that you're in yeah. is very tough you know and I think that's the one thing Moy Cullen do an absolutely amazing job of is not putting too much expectations trust the process and see where they get to and they've had a I tell you what it is fascinating. It is the same time of every game that Paul Kelly gets called for that. <laughs> when coaches call for it the whole game, and when the game is done, then they call it. It's <laughs> fascinating. Temple Oak doing a good job. Just keep battling away here. It's still a 14-point game, 3.45 to go in the fourth quarter here. I've uh, Just on that senior kind of junior player balance, it's actually... Over the last couple of years, when young guys are coming into the squad, it's actually really kind of, it adds a huge amount to even older guys. They, they get a joy out of kind of seeing young guys come in, making an impact. And there's an excitement around as, as people are kind of getting to, at the start of their career there, that makes some of the kind of more dull games during the year that little bit more interesting. Exactly. And I think it's the one thing that, um, I think it's the one thing really that we have to look at in terms of changing. Because... We don't get an awful lot of turnover, so how do you keep the chemistry? Because we're obviously with the Super League, it's it's the same players, and then coaches move on. So that's kind of how you change the dynamic of the of the group a little bit. Yeah. So it's 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 an interesting thing, but you know, I think younger players do need senior players around them to learn the mental aspect of the game. Yeah, Their definitely. skill sets is good, but it's the mental aspect, the timing. And I think that's the one thing from an Epsom perspective we don't have yet because we don't have that timing and not enough time in the Super League yet you know? it, it happened at the start of my Super League career it just happened that a group of the the pack lovers and those kind of all left at, around the same time so we were learning on the fly completely yeah and and they have nothing to base it on this is what Temple Oak should oh, oh lovely oh. pass <laughs> no look pass just as Temple Oak they got it back to 11 here the crowd was starting to get into it oh, oh here we go oh. So three and one. So in the midst of our kind of <laughs> basketball chat, <laughs> we've missed about two minutes of the <laughs> game and we now have squeaky bum time. And this is around the time too in the first game of the weekend with the under 18 women's where Port Leash were 10 down, nailed three threes and three possessions in like 45 yep. seconds. And then Waterford came down, nailed a three to put it back to four again, but it went right to the last possession. And Arcella hits the free throw. So it's back to single digits, but a foul is called. And because the team fouls, Paul Kelly's going to head to the free throw line. A missed free throw or two here, though, could make things interesting. 2.36 left on the clock. Erla McKeown obviously sitting on the bench, fouled out for Temple Oak. Paul Kelly hits the first and it's just that added, added dimension of having such a, a good point guard as well. It's really difficult to chase a game against a good point guard who yeah. can knock down free throws. Yeah, and he's powerful. Like he's not massively quick, but he's powerful. There's Chris. It just falls short. Paul Kelly under control. Again, the timing of the release where the trap came in was, was quite good there. And again, having someone like James Canera as well as a pressure release. He's a big guy, but he's also a guard. Paul Kelly for three. Oh, and good night. There you go. As the Temple Oak rallied, all of a sudden it's five points from Paul Kelly in a row. And it looks like that's mm. probably the... But he picks up a foul there. Is that his... I'm not sure. We'll just see the table how many fouls he has so without talking about darts being a sport by the way as opposed to a hobby thing that we watch but watching over Christmas in the PDC and they're talking about timing the timing of the 180s the timing of hitting a double off of a missed double we haven't seen Paul Kelly hit a three we know he's a good three point shooter Temple Oak come back in the game there's your timing of that dagger score that Paul Kelly yep. had of the three you know we saw it again in that first game of the weekend it's Abby Flynn one of the best guards in the country had a difficult shooting uh, game for herself but then came up with a huge uh, 
Huge shot as well, right as questions were being asked. So 12 point game, 155 to go. And that goes back to the mental aspect of it as well, Connor, that we just spoke about and learning that timing of when to row in and when to be that go-to person that you're capable of being. And that's why Abby did it at that particular time. So Adam Reardon is going to check out of the game. That's his fifth foul and Kean Doyle is going to come in. Good effort there by Adam. First free throw is good for Podrick Lenahan. And he knocks down the two. Leads back out now to 14. I set up a three, no good. Paul Kelly with the rebound. And we're gonna have a jump ball. I think if the fall wasn't called prior to Paul, or the jump ball wasn't called, I think Paul Kelly would have picked up an offensive foul there. Mm. Oh, nice fake step back three, no good. McKeown does a good job. Tough pass, and a foul is called, so Matthew Harper will head to the line. And that's not a two points right now, but it's becoming very scrappy now to try and. He's got five fouls for both teams on... Yeah, I thought that was two, two shots, yeah. Yeah, Matthew Harper heads the line. So credit to Temple O, though, Paul. They obviously have been outmatched here today, but they've been battling the entire time. This could easily have kind of gone away from them. Mike Cullen were playing very well, and Temple O have kept battling away. They're now down by just 12 points. Yeah, and they, they didn't give up, and they had to make more Cullen go again. And to be fair, to more Cullen shows their mentality and their mental strength. They went again. Yeah. That's also, it's just a testament, as we said, this Temple Oak team have won a lot of trophies over the years. Just a little aggressive there. Defense, and Paul Kelly will head back to the free throw line. So on these sort of weekends, you're looking for your top players to really perform and we couldn't have asked or Moy Cullen couldn't have asked for much more out of James Clare and Paul Kelly no certainly not and then they had their, their role chip-ins with um, James Lyons and McNeil as well so and to be fair to Temple Oak their two standout guys Mark Harper and James or Chris Asia turned up yep. you know so did, but I just think the role players from Moy Cullen just did a better job than, than what Temple Oak's guys did yeah different spells throughout that game Matthew Donlan as well he came up with some big plays when he first checked in and that's a missed free throw by Kelly. He looks disgusted. Yeah, and I think the, the making the one just pushed it out to a five possession game as opposed to being a four possession game to tie. So we're still there. So both free throws just fall. We pulled up for a three here somewhere. Twos aren't, no, aren't any good anymore. Shot clock got reset there. I'm looking at James and Matt Harper today and I'm looking at some of their in-balance finish around the rim. And I'd be quite disappointed if that was our Irish team where they'd be taking those imbalanced shots. We have a kind of a guideline of no contact, you can go off one foot versus contact, it's got to be two feet. Just to kind of give that guideline of, of knowing. So a bunch of things where they've had two feet not down against contact and it's led to bad shots. After a long conversation, the shot clock has been reset to 22 seconds. I like the fact that the referee spoke there now. Yep. There's too many times where we don't see that happen. I really like what they did there. Ever since Paul has retired from coaching, he's really hopped on this refing bandwagon. I've actually praised him quite a lot, actually. The rebound jump ball. It's going to stay with Mike Cullen. 45 seconds to go, 12-point game. 
Good scoring as well, 85-73, mm -hmm. yep. good offense. But I think there's been a lot of possessions with the tempo of the game too, so that, that kind of helps as well, which is really great. And James here finishing as he started. Yeah, lovely finish inside. Finishes through contact, heads to the free throw line. So, Mike Cullen look like they're about to be the first team into the under-20 Hula Hoops National Cup final. Canair misses. And as we said, we have another game at 3 o'clock, the second semi-final. Chris Arcel, nice move. Finishes it inside. It's always interesting, like that last minute and a half where you, where you abandon all reason. And it becomes like it's just trying to see the game out, but it's just that you just have to be that way, essentially, to try and get back in the game. But I think what needs to happen now is that if this is going to be the foul, every possession thing, Temple Oak have to start taking threes and making them to balance, yeah. overbalance the, the two points coming their way, you know? There's another missed free throw, though. So Mike Cullen, after shooting free throw as well throughout the game, have missed four of their last six, now five of their last seven, but... Temple Oak haven't, just haven't been able to eat into the lead. This would help. Tree just doesn't fall, and we'll see if they continue. If they do continue to fail. And that will probably be the last one. Got 25 seconds to go. We're going to hit two free throws here to James Kinnear. That's Matthew Harper fouling out of the game. So a good effort there by Matthew Unfortunately, just wasn't enough for Temple Oak on the day. I think it's always nice when you just see players give it everything, and if they're on the wrong end, then you gave it everything, you know? It's also... It, it seems like it's everything at the time, but this is all a process as well to get him to a stage where he's going to be able to hopefully win trophies for Temple Oak at, at senior level as well, he'll be hoping. Conair makes one of two. Yeah, it's now the five possession game and that's the danger when you're going two for two the whole time, you know? It stays the same, whereas it did. Yeah. So 13 seconds left, or 19 seconds left. Temple Oak no longer fouling. They're gonna just see out this last possession. Paul Kelly just dribbling over the line. Excellent performance there by Mike Cullen. Congratulations to them as they booked their place in the under 20 National Cup semi-final any final thoughts Paul before we leave it I just thought it was a really competitive game tempo was nice to watch really enjoyable game to watch some good skill sets yeah. individual performances team performances and um, you know what really good game and I think uh, Mike Cullen deserved the, the, the victory and Temple Oak gave everything they possibly had yeah we'll leave it there we're back at 3pm for the last game of the weekend the other under 20 semi-final we will leave it there congratulations to Mike Cullen